What if we told you that the inhabitants of the ancient world were much more advanced than we could have ever imagined? What if everything we learned in history lessons only reflected a fraction of the historical truth? There are researchers who have their problems with the common representations of the past, researchers who are convinced that the world-famous pyramids of Giza are in fact not monumental tombs at all and may not even have been created by the ancient Egyptians. But what is this provocative assumption all about? Is there any evidence to support it? And above all, what original purpose would the stone colossi have served? We have sent space probes to distant planets, decoded DNA, and split atomic nuclei. And despite all this, we are still unable to understand a 4,500-year-old pile of stones. Okay, admittedly, this formulation may seem a little exaggerated at first, and yet it gets to the heart of one of the greatest archaeological mysteries of our time. How were the ancient Egyptian pyramids built? Is it possible that the gigantic monuments were really only built using simple copper tools, primitive ramps, and pure muscle power? Are these theories even tenable in view of the overwhelming dimensions and perfect alignment? Anyone who consults the official specialist texts on the architectural masterpieces of the pharaonic empire's inhabitants is confronted with articles brimming with words such as presumably, approximately, and estimated. A, well, rather vague treasure trove of information, which consequently also leaves a great deal of scope for speculation and alternative theories. That this is the case is in turn due to the scarcity of archaeological sources. After all, did you know that just three artifacts were recovered from the Pyramid of Khufu? And these were by no means precious grave goods or even a pharaoh's mummy. No, the find consists of a sphere, a hook, and a few fragments of cedar wood. The reason generally given for the lack of discoveries is that the Great Pyramid was probably completely looted hundreds of years ago. In view of the limited finds, however, some people are already puzzled by a much more fundamental point. Was the structure even built in honor of the ancient Egyptian king Cheops? Proponents of this theory point to some of the construction workers' graffiti with the ruler's name. Skeptics point to the unusual appearance of the monument, which differs from all known tombs in Egypt. Despite this, however, the consensus remains that the Pyramid of Khufu, like all other pyramids, is an oversized tomb intended to represent the power and strength of the epitomous king. And even if there is no archaeological evidence for this either, the construction of this enigmatic giant can certainly be explained using conservative methods. Regardless of the fact that the Egyptians did not even use the wheel back then, the blocks weighing several tons were painstakingly shaped into perfect geometric forms by hand and then transported to their destination, sometimes hundreds of kilometers away. The massive loads then had to be balanced on top of each other using ingenious ramp systems, and over a period of 20 years, a monument was created that was so perfect that not even a sheet of paper would have fitted between its limestone blocks. But that's not all. At the end of the work was a stone giant whose 2.65 million blocks were placed so perfectly that the difference in the four edge lengths is not even a thousandth. What is the true purpose of these enigmatic chambers? No less awe-inspiring than its external appearance is the internal layout of the Pyramid of Khufu. But let's get this straight. Most of the mysterious pyramid's heart still lies dormant. You will no doubt remember the archaeological bombshell that hit the headlines in March last year. Back then, researchers were able to uncover a previously unknown chamber in the Pyramid of Khufu. However, the purpose of the cavity, which is over 2 meters high and 9 meters long, is just as uncertain as the question of what secrets are hidden behind it. As part of the sensational discovery, the researchers took the opportunity to remind the rest of the world of another remarkable fact. So far, only 10% of the Pyramid of Khufu is known to us. All in all, the experts only count the King's Chamber, the Queen's Chamber, the Great Gallery, and the Underground Rock Chamber. But that's not all. Contrary to the official name, we don't know what the true background of the so-called Queen's Chamber is. The term, which is still in use today, goes back to a misinterpretation from the Arab era. What we do know, however, is that the chamber in question also has a series of shafts that leave us with raised eyebrows. Situated at a height of around 1.5 meters, these have a diameter of just 20 centimeters. And before they were rediscovered and forcibly opened by Wenman Dixon in 1872, 
they were still sealed. Incidentally, the Scotsman also came across the three artifacts mentioned during his rough historical search. These are generally interpreted as so-called model burial objects, that is, as tools that were intended to serve Cheops in the afterlife. But why did the Egyptians make it so difficult for the pharaoh's soul and place the object in a sealed shaft? And why did modern carbon dating reveal that the wooden fragments are around 500 years older than the pyramid? The researchers say that the Egyptians probably reused the wood for half a millennium, as the raw material was both rare and precious at the time. However, some people believe that the great age of the artifacts proves that the Pyramid of Khufu was also built much earlier than generally assumed. This robot discovered mysterious hieroglyphics. But back to the mysterious shafts of the Queen's Chamber. It is certain that the northern shaft is blocked after about 40 meters by a firmly jammed iron bar. Are you wondering what this strange barrier is all about? Well, we have no idea. The official story is that the bar may have been left behind by Dixon when he blindly inspected the shaft. The fact that we even know about the existence of this strange relic is thanks to a certain Rudolf Gattenbrink. The German engineer took a closer look at the ominous shafts in 1993 using a mini robot. However, as the iron bar made further investigation of the northern shaft impossible, Gattenbrink and his team decided to focus on the southern counterpart instead. And just under 2.3 meters, the latter makes a steep turn of 40 degrees. And a good 55 meters further on, the robot vehicle that had been lowered into the shaft finally came face to face with a polished limestone block. As this is adorned with two heavily weathered copper fittings, many an observer recognized a kind of door in it. But in order to finally be able to look behind the stone blockade, it was drilled through in 2002. Ultimately, however, the hoped-for sensation failed to materialize. The researchers here merely uncovered another small cavity, which presumably embodies the end of the shaft. In the same breath, however, the northern shaft also came back into scientific focus. But the experts were once again confronted with a block of stone with copper fittings that made further progress impossible. In the end, it took until 2011 before the blocking stone and the small chamber behind it were examined again. And with the help of the DJ robot, which was equipped with a movable endoscope, the experts actually made some exciting discoveries. For example, the new all-round view revealed that the back of the barrier is also polished smooth while the copper fittings there form two eyelets. In addition, the DJ camera also captured some red markings on the floor of the small chamber, which are construction work or graffiti. Well, presumably, of course. Is the Pyramid of Khufu an ancient power station? There is one question that we have not yet addressed in detail. What was the purpose of the shafts in the Queen's Chamber in the first place? Why did the ancient Egyptians make passages that ended in the proverbial void? If they were really just ventilation shafts, the fact that they did not lead outside seems unusual to say the least. An alternative theory is that we are dealing here with the corridors through which the Pharaoh's soul ascended to heaven. According to this theory, the corridors show the ruler the way to the imperishable stars of the northern sky, but in order to make the mystical journey, false doors or ritual corridors were needed. But assuming that the shafts of the Queen's Chamber really served this purpose, either as an actual tomb corridor or as so-called model corridors, why do they end a full 15 meters from the outside? Wouldn't the Pharaoh's soul have come to a dead end? Moreover, the ascent to the northern sky would not actually have required a corridor leading to the south. In fact, we know of no other pyramid that has such a corridor orientation. And we should also remember another important point. The text on which our knowledge of the ancient Egyptians' concepts of the afterlife is based were not handed down until 250 years after the construction of Khufu's pyramid. However, there is another theory that makes us forget all these spiritual mysteries, simply because it is based on the assumption that the pyramid of Khufu was not a tomb at all. In detail, we are supposed to be dealing with an ancient high-tech miracle an ancient power plant that transformed the pyramid into a radiant source of light. According to this assumption, the inhabitants of the Pharaonic Empire also chose their building material for a very specific reason. Limestone has exceptionally good conductivity. 
but the ingenious inner workings of the pyramid are also said to have played a major role. In this regard, there is talk of electrons flowing through water-filled caves beneath the structure, splitting and rising into the queen's chamber in the form of hydrogen gas. The mysterious Gattenbrink doors were therefore installed to prevent the gas from escaping. The ominous copper clamps, in turn, serve the purpose of guiding the electromagnetic radiation into the system. At the same time, the King's Chamber took on the task of collecting all the free electrons from the Queen's Chamber and guiding them to the top of the pyramid. And what is commonly interpreted as the Pharaoh's sarcophagus was actually a component for generating high voltage to ionize the hydrogen and keep the space conductive. Sounds pretty exciting, doesn't it? Well, it certainly is, but in this case too, it's an exciting but completely unconfirmed speculation. And even if the light source theory is true, some questions remain unanswered. Why did the Egyptians want to create such a spectacle of light in the first place? Where did the knowledge required to implement it come from? And why is the glistening spectacle not mentioned in any ancient writings? As we can see, the field of alternative Egyptology has not only been enriched by an exciting hypothesis, but also by many mysteries. And now, you can easily become one subscription richer. Press the like and subscribe button and never miss a new video from us again.